Well, good morning to Thomas Pound, and we're glad to have you with us today on behalf of the History and Archives Committee of the First Baptist Church. We've been doing videos, interviews of uh, people in our church that have served in the military over the years, in wartime and in peacetime. And Thomas served during uh, the Vietnam War, which all of us are very familiar with as far as the history of uh, the military in our country. So welcome to you, Thomas. Thank you very much for and having me. Welcome back to LaGrange <clears throat> since you've retired and come back to your hometown. I will say that uh, Thomas uh, grew up in LaGrange and he's been uh, several places uh, working uh, since then and, 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 and been in Vietnam. And so let me start out by asking you, Thomas, to, to just sort of give us a rundown of uh, of your growing up in LaGrange and what led up to your experiences in work and in uh, and military. Okay. I was born and raised in LaGrange and uh, I have a brother and two sisters. Uh, uh, I graduated from LaGrange High School and went off to college at uh, Reinhardt College and uh, for the first two years uh, ended up meeting my ex-wife at, at college and uh, we decided we would consolidate and go on to school together, so uh, we got married. Too young, probably. <laughs> but anyway, uh, I, I was married three months and I got my draft notice. And I was supposed to start class two weeks after I got my draft notice. So I came down to LaGrange and talked with the draft lady, uh, board lady, and uh, she uh, said I had to be in class day, I got my draft notice, which that's impossible, and it started two weeks after that. And I probably could have appealed it, but I decided I, I need to go ahead and fulfill my, organ, organ, fulfill my obligation and uh, get it behind me. So I uh, <clears throat> went into the United States Army. I took my basic training at Fort Benning, and then after Fort Benning, um, I went to uh, Fort Pope, Louisiana for my advanced infantry training in guerrilla warfare. Uh, after that training, I, w I was sent to Vietnam. It was March of 67 um, to M March of 68, I was in Vietnam. Uh, my first unit was the 196 Light Infantry Brigade. I spent probably three months in the field. <clears throat> I had a developed a skin problem, being fair to the skin, and the uh, sent me to a dermatologist in Saigon and they gave me a profile where I couldn't go out during the daytime but I could go out at night so um, I went out night ambushes and of course we did uh, when I was in the field we uh, we did uh, uh, patrols and also uh, mine sweeps and we provided security while the Vietnamese harvested crops and we also did mission like uh, blocking force where uh, we go out at night and uh, <coughs> behind the village and the main company would sweep the village and then any stragglers of BC would come out the back end and then we would pick them up and uh, it was experience of that but I recall my first time going out uh, was some experience uh, we had a company pinned down and the whole company had to saddle up and go out to support them and I only been in company uh, one day and so it was my first time out. There was a lot of firing going on. It was about three miles before we got to where they were and uh, gunships and airstrikes. And uh, I, I started thinking about my wife and family sort of got choked up, but uh, kept on walking. And we got set up and one of the guys said, Pound, you scared? I said, yeah, a little, but I really a whole lot. He said, that's all right, we all are. So I felt a little better, but uh, we provided support and really didn't even have to fire and uh, they withdrew and they burned the village and uh, so that was some experience there that I remember. And uh, Then since I went out that day, the Sarge came to me and told me to get my gear together, go out that night uh, on the ambush. And, uh, uh, so I got my gear together and he came back and said, Pam, you don't have to go. Uh, we got to give three days to get settled before you go out on uh, missions, and, but they needed everybody that day. And I uh, said, okay, so we ran four men ambushes, but that particular night there was five men went out, one machine gun attached. So they went out and uh, 
one guy stepped on a mine, blew both legs and one arm off. Another guy got it in the throat and killed him instantly. Another guy got it in the back and legs and ended up sending him home. So there was two guys left. And they, it was a really experience for them. And they said that dust off, we didn't have to get them on the, on the, on the, on the dust off. So that, I think about that a lot because one of the guys that took my place ended up getting killed. And they, they were expecting a baby, and uh, we were expecting a baby at the time. And uh, so that's one experience that stands out in my mind. But to show me, too, that God was with me, and he was with me throughout uh, my Vietnam experience. Um, after a uh, while, they, they uh, sent me to the battalion headquarters for uh, since they couldn't continue to send me out at night, only at night. So I was with the battalion headquarters for a few more months, and then they were shipping all non combatant units to uh, uh, 9th and P Battalion. And I was going to ammo dump to provide security for them, and, uh, and I could, had some college could type, so they put me in the S3 and tell them security, which was another time God would work. Spare me too, because they hit that ammo dump about three times, and the guy that went there, was going there with me, he um, ended up uh, jumping out of a tower, and it affected him, his personality. So God was with me again, and um, so I ended up uh, spending my time in Vietnam and, and came home. And my son was born when I was in Vietnam, so that was a really delight meeting him for the first time. A little strange too, because. When I left, my wife wasn't, wasn't even showing, and there I was all of a sudden back married and with a, with a family. <laughs> but we picked up right away, and uh, then I, I took it early out to go back to college, so I went to uh, West Georgia College, and by the time I was ready to get my degree, my daughter came along. I was working full-time and going to school full-time, so I ended up getting my degree at uh, Piedmont College while I was city manager of uh, Clarksville, Georgia. But I spent most of my career in utility management, and uh, uh, I was in different states like Georgia, mostly Florida, uh, Mississippi, and uh, Alabama. Um, quite a few different private utilities in Florida. And then when I retired, I was with American Water Enterprise, and we contracted out with military bases, and I was utility manager for Fort Rooker when I retired. And then I came back home. Do you feel like your experiences in uh, the military uh, were a positive thing as far as preparing you for your working career? I think so. It uh, taught me that good Lord would be with me and he's been with me throughout my life. Uh, it also taught me endurance, uh, patience. Uh, so uh, it was good. But I, I wouldn't take anything for the experience, but I wouldn't, wouldn't go, want to go through it again. I understand, and I, uh, I have lived long enough to remember everything since World War II. And Vietnam was probably the most controversial and damaging to our military as far as uh, what we were trying to do and how it ended <clears throat> up. And, and it seems like it's probably going to be that way from now on as far as controversy over all of our wartime experiences. World War II was was uh, only four plus years and we went in and we did it and we came home and we can't seem to do that with wars nowadays and I'm not speaking uh, for or against uh, our wartime efforts I certainly support our military but uh, it's interesting to see how things have uh, moved along in the military in my lifetime. Mm -hmm. uh, I know that you probably uh, don't regret having been in the military. I uh, feel like, based on what you said, it was a positive experience in a lot of different ways. So uh, I just want to say thank you for your efforts mm -hmm. and your serving your country. Uh, anything else you might like to tell us about uh, growing up in LaGrange or your experiences after 
being in the military, your experiences, your work experiences, anything that you, you would like to have on this video that might be of interest to others? Well, it's pretty much a career like most people. Uh, uh, I had a good career and uh, uh, was able to provide for my family, so I'm thankful for that. Uh, I did come out of something I think the good Lord sort of inspired me to do it. I, I wrote a book called uh, Walk Like a Man, My Son, and uh, it tells, it builds up when I graduated from high school and went off to college and meet my own ex-wife and then my experience in Vietnam and it I think it's the inspiration to uh, troops being deployed for the first time. <clears throat> I uh, donate books to the Operation Shoebox and they send material and read material to the troops and I got a letter from uh, Mary Harper from uh, Operation Shoebox. She said it was inspiration to the troops so I feel that was my purpose of that book, the good Lord maybe led me to do that, and uh, so um, it's you can get it on. Amazon. I'm not trying to give a commercial, but uh, it's on Amazon.com. And uh, if you have a loved one that you want to send a book, not only my book, but any book that is inspiration to them, especially the ones that are going for uh, first time in a combat zone, then. Uh, it's inspirational, and uh, uh, that's something I've, I felt. I know how it's like in the other veterans going to a combat zone, and uh, it's good to have uh, the knowledge and understanding that God will be with you. And uh, He was with me and others. There's 58,000 killed, but there's millions that actually served. So um, God will be with you if you trust Him. I think that's the purpose of the book. Well, these are nice remarks, Thomas. And this is a nice interview. Uh, I, I thank you for doing it. Uh, before we summarize it, I would like to say, ask you if there's anything else you have on your mind that you might like to have on this tape of anything that's happened in your lifetime. F feel free to, to uh, go at it. <clears throat> Getting back to your comments about the fight in the war, uh, they said we lost Vietnam. We didn't lose Vietnam, we, we didn't win it, but uh, we won every campaign. Uh, you win a war through conventional means like World War II. If we invaded North Vietnam and, and took territory in, instead of fighting a guerrilla warfare, it's, it's kind of hard to win a war like that. And especially when you leave a country like we did and didn't support the um, Vietnamese army, uh, it, you can't win wars like it. It's a waste, and we should never go to war unless we go in to win. And, and uh, we have the capabilities uh, to win a war. We have the firepower and the men and the women to do it. Uh, but just need to do it, and the politicians stay out of it. And then Johns was making decisions on what targets to bomb that he shouldn't been been doing. Uh, things like that. Yeah. You don't win wars like that. And uh, guys came back um, disabled and arms and limbs missing and men killed. Uh, it's not worth it. Well, this is, these are very interesting remarks and I'm sure uh, people are they're well received with whoever's watching this video to hear things like this from a person who has served in Vietnam. I, uh, I thank you for your service there. Thank you. And I thank you for this interview, and I would like to mention that uh, <coughs> a, a copy of this video uh, will be given to you, and there will be a copy of it in our archives and with our Archives and History Committee in the church and also in our church library, and also in the... Uh, archives building downtown LaGrange. Mm -hmm. So uh, we thank you for doing this interview and, You're welcome. and uh, we thank you for coming today and we thank you for your service to your country. Thank you, Thomas thank you for inviting me. Thank you thank very you. much.